Okay, having introduced the concept of thermodynamics and the idea of enthalpy, we're now free to talk about the next key component of thermodynamics, which is entropy. And you've probably heard of entropy before. It's probably not the first time you're hearing of it. Um, the most common way that I hear it explained is it's the number of specific ways in which a system can be arranged. And it's often taken as a quantitative measure of how disordered something is. So what are we talking about? Well, imagine this scenario here. You've got this closed system where on the left side you've got white molecules, on the right side you've got black molecules, right? So different types of gas molecules we can imagine. Nitrogen and, and oxygen molecules, okay? And then you open up this partition, so you slide that out, and all of a sudden these things don't have to remain separate anymore. Will they mix on their own or not? Well, you've done this probably in your life. The vast majority of things, when you give them a chance to mix, they will, right? If you take red marbles and white marbles and then you start to shake that bucket, if you open that lid, is it really still going to be like white marbles and red marbles? No, not unless the density or something is very, very different. They're going to start to mix. In fact, this is what you're going to see. It'll go like this in an intermediate state where it starts to mix, and eventually they'll be pretty well mixed all the way through. So why on earth does that happen? The reason it happens is because when you go from this to this state, you increase the entropy. And we're going to learn that entropy wants to increase. That's favorable for energy is if you increase the entropy, you make it more disordered. So I have an example for you. Um, we're going to talk about polymers with a demo, but first I have to show you um, some spaghetti strands, right? So these are spaghetti pasta noodles, okay? And these are dry. And these things line up really nicely. You could arrange them and you could stack them together in some sort of nice arrangement if you wanted. So these are relatively um, well ordered, okay? That's a, a relatively ordered system. Now compare that with this, right? A bowl of spaghetti noodles is not very ordered at all, right? This thing's a jumble, everything's all, all over the place. So which one has the higher configurational entropy, meaning different ways this could exist? Because this could exist like that, but you could rotate it infinite ways, right? For this thing to keep existing. So this is much more disordered than this. This has some degree of entropy, nothing compared to this. This is way, way, way more disordered. So this is how polymers look. Polymers, the plastics that we use all around us, right? Things like these. These, If you zoomed in on them, they're made up of a bunch of strands of chains of molecules. Now, if it's a rubber material, like a rubber band, then what they've done is they've, they've taken this, okay, I'm going to pull this out, and they've cross-linked it. See how this is kind of stuck together? I cooked these noodles and I didn't rinse them. So when I pull on them, they go back, right? They're kind of elastic. They're stuck together, okay? So that's sort of like a, a uh, an elastomer, a rubber. You started out with a polymer like this, and then you did something to cross-link them. Imagine if I drizzled like, um, I don't know, let's say cheese on this, and then I let that cheese solidify. It would hold these noodles together, right? So that they couldn't just slide past one another. On the other hand, if you take noodles like this, and I think I, I rinsed these and then I put a little bit of olive oil on them, these things slide past each other really easily. So this is an example of a polymer that's melting. When a polymer melts, these chains can just slide right past each other. In its solid state, these chains cannot slide as easily past each other. See how it's pulling that big chunk up? When I, when I grab a chunk, it, it kind of drags others with it because they are bonded to one another. So with that um, out of the way, let me ask you the following question. If I take a rubber band, right? I've got a rubber band. I can take this rubber band and it can exist in two states, um, the relaxed state or the stretched state, right? Stretched out. If it's in the stretched state, you all know that if I let go of this, it automatically goes back to a relaxed state, right? That reaction from stretched to um, relaxed is spontaneous, right? So we know that the overall energy must be going down when you go from this to this. But what's interesting is imagine this for a minute. Um, well, you can take one of these and try and stretch it, right? Let it stay stretched out for a minute. Then hold it up against your lip uh, your lips can sense temperature pretty well, and tell me what it feels. Hold it out. It feels a little bit cool to the touch. Try it the other way. Yeah, going that way, it feels warmer. So, if the temperature is changing, right, then that's enthalpy, right? 
the temperature is changing, there must be an exchange of enthalpy, right? If there's a dq. So as we stretch this thing, it's getting cooler. And as we let it go, it's getting warmer, right? So stretching it, if it's getting warmer, right? Stretching it gets warmer. And if letting it go gets cooler, what's happening? So bonds must be being broken or formed. When you form bonds, you give off energy. When you break bonds, you have to absorb energy. So when we go from here to here, it's getting warmer. We must be forming bonds. When we go from here to here, it's getting cooler. We must be absorbing energy to break those bonds. Okay? So what bonds are we forming when we go from this to this? What type of bonds are forming? So here's the questions, right? So the first one we already did is the rubber band contraction exothermic or endothermic. When it contracts, when it goes like this to this, it feels cool. So that must be endothermic. Okay? Then we say the rubber band is spontaneous. Yes. It contracts automatically. We don't have to do anything. It does it on its own. Okay? So it's looking like we have a um, spontaneous endothermic reaction. Jen Kim probably, you probably remember hearing that if something's exothermic, it gives off heat, then it's spontaneous. Not necessarily, because here we have the exact opposite. We have something that is absorbing heat. You can feel it get cooler, but it's still spontaneous. So why? Okay. Um, so how about this? For an endothermic reaction, are bonds formed or broken? Well, endothermic means it's absorbing energy, so it must be breaking bonds, right? Not forming them. Forming would give off heat. Breaking bonds. Think of like our potential energy well. Remember how we looked like this? When you form a bond, you had energy versus interatomic distance, right? Energy versus interatomic spacing. When it's chilling down here, that's, an, that's a bond has formed. And to pull it all the way away, you have to go up in terms of energy. So you have to absorb energy, okay? Well, how about this then? As we stretch the band, what type of bonds must be forming? So the bonds that you're forming are secondary bonds. Remember, if you've got this, then all of these strands of molecules, when you stretch it out, they line up like this. Rather than being a squiggled mess, like, <laughs> rather than being this, they turn into this. When they're nice and lined up, then you can get um, additional bonds to form. The type of bonds that you form are going to be van der Waals or secondary bonds. So it might look something like this. You end up with these polymer chains, which are like that. And if they line up because you stretched these things, remember, if you have slight dipoles on this, if this is slightly negative and this is slightly positive, that interaction right there, that is the bond that we're creating. So. With that said, let me ask the question. If I take a rubber band, like this one, and I hang it, okay, and there's something heavy on the end, okay, and then I hit this with a blow dryer, so I heat it up, what do you think will happen to it? Will it get longer or will it get shorter? Will it contract or will it expand? What do you think? Okay, let's take a look. I did this experiment for you just a moment ago. So let's see how it looks. Okay, what you see here is a bottle hanging on a rubber band. You see a ruler that's going to allow us to mark this spot here. You see it, that little black spot, which by my eyes is right around maybe 22 and a half centimeters. Now we're going to take a blow dryer and we're going to turn it on. Take a look at that. It's already up to 22. Twenty-one. And then, as we turn it off, it's going to slowly expand back down again. Twenty-two. A little over twenty-two. Stretching down to two and twenty-two and a half. So how cool is that? Basically what we're doing is when we give it energy, when it's stretched out, oops, when it's stretched out, it looks like this. But if you give it energy, you give it energy to break some of these bonds and allow them to go from a straight noodle to a more disordered noodle, right? So even though it's endothermic, what is driving this reaction is entropy. 
the desire of the universe to become more disordered is what's driving this reaction. And that is the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics, mathematically, if we write it out, is as follows. S, our entropy, the change in S, the change in entropy, dS, is equal to the integral of the change in heat, dQ, over temperature, and that this must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. In other words, what this is really saying is that at best a reaction is reversible, and very often it's non-reversible where it goes from an ordered state to a disordered state. Okay. In other words, in the universe, uh, the universe is expanding. It's not contracting because that would be becoming more ordered. It's expanding and becoming more disordered. So that is entropy. Um, now, how does entropy influence chemical reactions? We know that it wants to increase. It wants to increase. Okay? If it wants to increase, then let's think about reactions. If you've got a reaction where the molecule size changes, it goes from a really big molecule to um, smaller molecules, a bigger molecule can be more, can have a higher configurational entropy. For example, consider this little tiny um, spaghetti noodle, right? Now compare that to a longer one. Which, which one of these has more configurational entropy? Which ones could we arrange in more ways? Well, this one, right? We could arrange it and twist it and curl it in ways that the other one can't do. Okay, so bigger molecules have more entropy. What about phases of matter? Well, what phases of matter are out there? You've got solid, liquids, and gas. Which ones are going to change your entropy, right? So first off, for molecule size, um, large molecules have more entropy. Large molecule, um, higher entropy. Okay, now for phase, the, fa the, uh, the entropy of a gas is going to be different than the entropy of a liquid, which is going to be different than the entropy of a solid. Which one's greatest? Um, the gas, right? Gas molecules are flying all over the place. They are not organized at all, which is more than liquid, but liquid is more than a solid. In a, in a liquid, they're floating around a little bit more than a solid, um, less than a gas, okay? Um, you can see there's some changes in bonding, right? Uh, delocalized bonding is going to be more uh, entropic than a localized, like a covalent bond. Um, you can see it in dissolution as you dissolve salt into water. You went from a nice crystalline ordered salt and then it dissolved into the liquid, so that changed your entropy. Um, and with atomic mass, as you move down the periodic table from the light elements to the heavier ones, they have more electrons, more protons, more uh, neutrons, there's more configura configurational entropy. There's more ways that those electrons can be in lots of different places, so there's greater entropy there. Okay, So those are your uh, general rules for entropy in this class.